The source of Northwest's next big earthquake has now been mapped. University of California, Berkeley has made this research. An ocean bottom seismometer has been used to retrieve a sample after spending 10 months on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. And it did that in order to map the mantle 100 miles underneath the Juan de Fuca plate. A large team of scientists has nearly completed the first map of the mantle under the tectonic plate that is colliding with the Pacific Northwest, putting Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver at risk of the largest earthquakes and tsunamis in the world. These are called the mega thrusts and of course the biggest in the world, yes. A new report from five members of the mapping team describes how the movement of the ocean bottom Juan de Fuca plate is connected to the flow of the mantle 100 miles underground, which could help seismologists understand the forces generating quakes as large as the destructive, destructive Japan quake, the Tohoku quake that struck Japan in March of 2011, causing a tsunami that caused the Fukushima, Fukushima nuclear disaster, which is still ongoing. It was a triple whammy, earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster. Quote, this is the first time we've been able to map out the flow of the mantle across the entire plate so as to understand plate tectonics on a grand scale, and quote, said Richard Allen, who is a professor and chair of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the University of California at Berkeley and the senior author of a paper published online November 2nd, journal Nature Geoscience. Quote, our goal is to understand large-scale plate tectonic processes and start to link them all the way down to the smallest scale to specific earthquakes in the Pacific Northwest. The major surprise, Alan said, is that the mantle beneath a small piece of the Juan de Fuca plate is moving differently from the rest of the plate, resulting in segmentation of the subduction zone. Similar segmentation is seen in Pacific Northwest megaquakes, which don't always break along the entire 1,000 kilometer or 600 mile length producing magnitude 9 or even greater. Instead, it often breaks along shorter segments, spreading quakes of magnitudes 7 or 8. And of course, these 7 or 8s can still create tsunamis. Plate tectonics in the area. The Juan de Fuca plate offshore of Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia is small, about the size of California, and 50 to 70 kilometers thick, but it's big enough to generate a magnitude 9 earthquake as it shoves underneath the, North, the continental North American plate. Because of the hazard from the so-called Cascadia subduction zone, a recent New Yorker article portrayed the area as a disaster waiting to happen, predicting that, quote, an earthquake will destroy a sizable portion of the coastal Northwest, end quote. But little is known about the tectonic plates submerged under the oceans, how they are linked to processes inside the earth, such as the melted mantle rock underlying them, or how the crust and mantle interact to cause mega thrust earthquakes at subduction zones. The Juan de Fuca plate is one of seven major and dozens of minor plates that cover the earth like a jigsaw puzzle pushing around pushed around by molten rock rising at the middle, mid-oceanic ridges and at their margins, diving under the plates or ramming into them to generate mountains, ranges like the Himalayas. Of course, the rising mid-ocean ridges, let's just take a look and remember what happened with the hot spot in the middle of the Pacific Basin. That hot spot, of course, is the island chain of Hawaii with the uh, Kilauea eruption uh, that was over about three months, and it's now in a phase of pause. So it's coming up there, and it's pushing up the whole plate underneath one side, for example, on western the west coast of the United States, underneath the North American plate. The largest of Earth's tectonic plates, the Pacific plate, is moving eastward, plunging under the entire western edge of the Americas, creating a ring of fire dotted with volcanoes and mountain ranges and imperiled by earthquakes. Until now, scientists have deployed only a handful of seismometers 
on the seabed worldwide to explore the mantle underlying these plates, said Allen, who also is director of the Berkeley Seismological Laboratory and one of the co-principal investigators for the $20 million Cascadia Initiative. Led by the University of Oregon, the initiative is funded by the National Science Foundation to develop new underwater and onshore seismic instruments to measure the plate's interaction with the mantle or the asthenosphere and monitor quake and volcanic activity at the trench of the coast off the coast where the Juan de Fuca plate subducts under the North American plate. Quote, the experiment was unprecedented in that there were 70 seismometers deployed at the time, sitting there for 10 months, which is much bigger than any other ocean bottom experiment ever done before, said Robert Martin Short, a UC Berkeley graduate student and first author of the paper. Quote, we've learned a lot from the deployment of these new instruments and now have a giant array that we know works well on the seafloor and which we can move somewhere else in the future for a similar experiment, end quote. While the deployment of the seismometers at 120 sites on the ocean floor was a technical challenge, Allen said, quote, the offshore environment is much simpler, the plates are thinner and more uniform than continental plates, and we can see through them to get a better sense of what's going on beneath. Since 2012, the team has made 24 two-week ocean voyages to place a ret and retrieve the seabed seismometers, providing dozens of students, undergraduates, and graduate students from UC Berkeley, Columbia University, Universities of Oregon, Washington, and Imperial College of London, UK, an opportunity to participate in field research. The last of the seabed seismometers were pulled up this month, and the data is being prepared for analysis. Based on the first three years of data, Allen and his team confirmed what geophysicists suspected. At the mid-ocean, Juan de Fuca Ridge, about 300 miles off Seattle, the western edge of the Juan de Fuca plate, the flow of the mantle below the plate is perpendicular to the ridge, presumably because the newly formed plate drags the underlying mantle eastward along with it. That's frightening, isn't it? As a plate moves away from the ridge, the mantle flow rotates slightly northward towards the trench. At its eastern margin, the plate then and underlying mantle move in alignment perpendicular to the subduction zone as expected. Presumably, the subduction portion of the, deep, of the plate deep under the trench is pulling the massive plate downward at the same time that the emerging lava at the mid-ocean spreading ridge is elevating the plate and pushing it eastward. Now, just south of the Juan de Fuca plate is the Gorda plate, and the Gorda plate adrift. Allen and his colleagues found, however, that a part of the Juan de Fuca plate called the Gorda plate, located off the northern California coast, is not coupled to the mount mantle, leaving the mantle beneath Gorda to move independently of the plate above. Instead, the Gorda mantle seems to be aligned with the mantle moving under the Pacific plate. He said, quote, the Juan de Fuca plate is clearly influencing the flow of the mantle beneath it, but the Gorda plate is apparently too small to affect the underlying mantle, end quote. This change in mantle flow produces a break or discontinuity in the forces of the plate, possibly explaining segmentation along the subduction zone. Quote, when you look at earthquakes in Cascadia, they sometimes break just along the southern segment, sometimes on the southern two-thirds, and sometimes along the entire length of the plate, Allen said. The change in the mantle flow could be linked to that segmentation, end quote. The Cascadia Initiative is a community experiment designed by the research community with all data immediately available to the public. NSF funded the project with money received through 2009 Stimulus or American Recovery and Reinvestment, ARRA for short. 11 scientists, including Alan from across the U.S., formed the Cascadia Initiative Expedition Team responsible for the offshore seismic deployment. Alan and Martin Short's co-authors on Natural Geoscience paper are Ian Basto and Eugen Totten of Imperial College and UC Berkeley, and geophysicist Mark Richard. 
professor of earth and planetary science. Richard helped develop the geodynamic model of the interaction between the plate and the mantle that explains how the faster moving Pacific plate could override the influence that the Gorda plate has on the mantle below. This is by University of California, Berkeley, and it was a journal reference from Nature Geoscience, it's on phys.org. Kindly support by contributing to my Patreon account. You'll find it in the description box below. Thank you.